And now I can just go ahead and draw the shear moment diagram for member CD using the end moments and shears. I have a couple choices of what I could do, but here if I, I like to redraw and I can go ahead and draw the shear and moment diagram. Just remember I had the, the hinge or the inflection points. I guess those here. So that means my moments should be zero there, which will it will be. My shear diagram, which is going to start at 25, decrease linearly to negative 25. Boom. Hopefully that's right around the middle-ish. Boom. And my moment diagram, I can again get from my shear diagram. You know, that's about as best I could do when I draw by hand. Don't judge me. Judge yourself. <laughs> In any case, here's what it looks like. I could determine the max value right here. Look at the area here. So one half base times the height. This distance right here is five meters. So one half 25 times five, which is 62.5 kilonewton meters. And that would make this right here plus 40. All right, the 40 kilonewton meters. And down here is negative 22.5 kilonewton meters. All right, and so I wish I could sit here and tell you that all this is perfect and it's, you know, you can neglect all your exact analyses and just go with approximate methods all the time. But the reality is it's not true. In fact, this is wildly off. At best, what it can do is give you a first approximation so that you don't have to, you know, guess the size of the member randomly when you design. You can have a, maybe a, something closer or some basis for choosing an initial steel shape or reinforced concrete dimension as you go through the iterative design process. All right, but look at the process is pretty straightforward. In fact, I didn't need, really need to write any of these equations. All I had to do was place the inflection points where I thought would be reasonable based on my structure. And then I, I took out the center beam right here or I cut away at the inflection points. It's a symmetrical, pin supported beam, if you will. So I know my reactions here just from symmetry, symmetry were just 20 each. And then I went to here and then I do, I can just do some of the forces in the vertical, some of the moments and I get my end moments and then I can draw my shear and moment diagrams. All right, and now we're gonna go through the same process for member BE over here. And all we're gonna do is just cut it out right here. Bam and bam, redraw it, separate it at the hinges, do the statics and then look at the cantilever and then and get the end shears and end moments and draw the shear and moment diagram. So that looks like this. And so when I look at that, if I cut through the hinge here, bam and bam, and by symmetry, I know that my vertical reactions here, when I cut out the hinge or my vertical shears are 40 and 40 kilonewtons. And now when I look at just this portion of the cutout, boom, I know from some of the forces in the vertical that I'm gonna have a vertical shear here of 50 kilonewtons. And here 40 times one will be a 40 kilonewton meter moment, 10 times one times a half of for the arm will give me five. So here I will have a moment of 45 kilonewton meters. And you know, you can look at this and just do it without having to write the equations out. But I, you know, I wrote the equations out in member CD in that analysis and that analysis process is exactly the same. But these two are my end shear and end moment. And when I draw my shear and moment diagrams, they will look like this. Very similar to before. In fact, let me move this one out of the way. See ya. And my shear and moment diagrams look like, yeah, something like that right here. This value, after you do the calculations, this value should be 80 kilonewton meters. And this right here is negative 45 kilonewton meters and negative 45 here. And there are my shear and moment diagram approximately for member BE. So I've gone ahead and I determined my shear and moment diagrams for my horizontal members or these girders that are part of the frame here. And now if I want to calculate the reactions at A, way down here, if I want to calculate approximately, again, the support reactions, like what is going on down here? Call this like AY, AX, and MA, like this. I can just take this free body diagram and go from joint to joint, member by member, to get down to joint A here and determine the reactions at the support. So the first thing I might do to determine the reactions is actually isolate joint C. So I start with the free body diagram of joint C, which boom, here's a joint, here's that end for member CB or CD. And if you remember in member CD, way over here, 
Member CD, here is, here is my end moment and end shear. And apply to joint C is going to be equal and opposite. So I would have 25 kilonewtons pointing down and an end moment going like this of 22.5 kilonewton meters. And on this end, I just know that joint C has to be in equilibrium. And in order for this thing to be in equilibrium, I need a 25 kilonewtons axial force like this causing compression on the face and then 22.5 kilonewtons newton meter so my joint doesn't spin in place for all eternity and then i look at the column member column i'll call it column cb cb and i would have equal and opposite from here to here so this is going to be 22.5 kilonewton meters and then equal and opposite causing compression on the face 25 kilonewtons and just like my structure my column or member cb must also be in equilibrium so when i sum forces in the vertical boom like this this is 25 kilonewtons and here this 22.5 if i take moments about this point i will notice that this should also be 22.5 kilonewton meters and then i go down to joint b which is connected it over here and here boom here right here here's joint b it's got three member edges if you will or three cuts and this side right here is equal and opposite to this side so i'm going to have 22.5 kilonewtons meters like this and then 25 equal and opposite 25 kilonewtons causing compression on the face and i go back and i look at member b e and I found that the end shear and end moment here at end B was 45 kilonewton meters and 50 kilonewtons. And so I'm going to have equal and opposite on this face of the cut. So I have 50 kilonewtons and 45 kilonewton meters like this. And in order for me, for this joint B to be in equilibrium, when I sum forces in the vertical, I'll notice that I have 25 down, 50 down. That means I need 75 upwards like this. And then I have 22 and a half and 45 both going clockwise so in order for this joint to be in equilibrium i need this moment to have 67.5 kilonewton meters going counterclockwise and that will make sure that joint b is in equilibrium and now i can work my way down to member b a this and i draw the member b a here this and then everything here is equal and opposite so i have i do equilibrium of the member and then i look at joint a finally i'm i have a moment of 67 and a half kilonewton meters equal and opposite 75 kilonewtons i had the three reactions that i drew in earlier a Y A X M A, and then I will take this joint A, apply my three equilibrium equations, and that will tell me that A X equals zero. I sum forces in the vertical, and that will tell me A Y is 75 kilonewtons pointing upward. So that's good. And M A, when I sum moments about point A for this joint A, it will tell me that I am 67 and a half kilonewton meters, my reaction, and going counterclockwise. And those I work, you know, it just I just use basic statics to work my way down from joint to member to joint to member to joint all the way until I got to the support reaction. And this would be my approximate analysis for this frame right here. And you know, by symmetry, just by looking at it, I could determine the reactions here at F as well. The thing to know is that depending on the approximation, you could be close, you could be far. And when it comes down to it is just a guess. Oi. So what's going to happen is this is best for a first approximation. And you may choose to ignore all this and just guess anyway. All right. So all we did was guess inflection points. And the better you can guess those, I guess the more accurate your guess is going to be. <laughs> anyway. All right. Take it easy. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any comments or questions below. See you later. Structure